So, you think hosting a Space Station 13 server is easy, right? I bet you're all thinking, but AA, you can run this game on a potato. Simply download your codebase, press compile, open Dream Daemon and press go, right? Right? Wrong. I've been meaning to make a series on this for a while, largely just as an explainer for SS13 hosting and beyond intricacies and stuff and the like. So, without further ado, this episode will cover Beyond and its intricacies, with future episodes on just a generalised hosting setup as well as the kind of software you run things on. Anyway, Beyond isn't like a regular programming language, and I don't even mean in terms of syntax or anything else. The closest thing I can approximate it to is Java, given how it's compiled and ran. However, Dream Daemon, the Beyond server runner, handles a lot more than the Java Virtual Machine would, but I'll get to that. When you compile Beyond Code, you don't get a native executable out of it like an .exe file. Instead, you get a .dmb file, which is all of your .dm code compiled into what's essentially .dm's own form of assembly, which most of Codeverse have taken to calling .dmasm, because, you know, .dm assembly. This is then interpreted by Dream Daemon, yes, interpreted, however, this isn't all that Dream Daemon does, since it has to handle things like networking, asset management, garbage collection, native procs like range, creating internal types like clients, as well as calling the code-defined handlers that you have in your code base for things like the is banned proc when players initially connect. Anyway, that's enough of code, let's talk about server running. Let's take the CPU that currently runs Paradise, an Intel i9-10900KF, and as we can see, it has 20 threads. Let's also throw in the RAM as well to get the full picture, 64GB in this case. So here we have all of these resources available for Beyond to use. But now, let's see what an instance of Beyond can actually use. Yeah, not a whole heck of a lot. Beyond is capable of using one thread and 4GB of RAM at most, and even that is a relatively recent change. It used to be just 2 gigabytes. Side note, this is why most competent hosts will run Beyond on a high-end desktop CPU as opposed to your standard server CPU like a Xeon or an Epic. Single core speed is everything to Beyond. One core running at 5.3 gigahertz, or 5.6 if you're a lunatic like me, is what matters to Beyond, not 64 of them running at 2.3 gigahertz. For context, Paradise runs on a 10900KF as I mentioned before. Russian Paradise runs on a 10900K, TG runs on a 9900K, Skyrat runs on a Ryzen 5900X. Side note, we used to use a 5900X, but then we swapped for reasons which I will get back to later when I talk about map sending. Either way, the most important thing for Beyond is single thread speed, because that speed is what powers proc execution as well as map sending, and those two pieces are the most critical parts of Beyond, as I will now explain. This is software called Tracy Profiler. It's fucking awesome. And by using a nice little tool known as Beyond Tracing, thank you Jay Reaper, you're a fucking god, we can get a very detailed look at how the tick is split up. But first, tiny bit of maths. Most SS13 servers run at 20 ticks a second. We're just gonna ignore Goon for now. And if you take a second, you've got a thousand milliseconds in that second. So if we want 20 ticks a second, 1000 divided by 20, that's 50 milliseconds per tick. So you have 50 milliseconds, the entire thing, split between proc execution and the map sending. Here we can see the part where procs are executed. So you have a few things resuming at the start, don't really worry about those, but the bulk of it is the mast controller execution. The mast controller is the backbone of the back end of the game and it manages all of the subsystems, which are essentially background processes that execute every so often in game. This is for stuff like atmospherics, player input, lighting, mob life, NPC AI, machine processing, object updating, timers, etc. The important thing is that everything in this region is stuff that we can control, and most importantly, postpone until the next tick if it's taking a lot of time. However, after all of this, we have sending of map data. All of this is entirely internal to Beyond and can't be modified directly, though we can make optimizations in-game to decrease it. 
The time this takes to execute scales with how many players are online. More players, more CPU needed to send the data to those players. Pretty simple. Now, if we go back to tick time for a second, each tick needs to be 50 milliseconds or less to execute in time like I mentioned before. What happens if a tick takes longer than that? Put simply, lag. And here we get to the crux of why we're pushing beyond to its absolute limits. And I'm just going to quickly go into the two most common pieces of criticism towards server lag. Uh, just buy a bigger server. I refer to what I was on about before, and how most servers are already running on stupidly powerful CPUs. Paradise is doing trials on a 13900K for fuck's sake, which at the time of writing is the CPU with the fastest single-threaded x86 execution speed. We cannot go any further. G just optimize your code. Code optimization is very important, there is no dispute in that. However, it can only get you so far, as I will now demonstrate with this tick in particular. As we can see in this extreme case, map sending is using 45 milliseconds of the tick. Remember earlier how I said it had to execute in 50 milliseconds or less? If map sending is using 45 milliseconds of the time, that leaves a pitiful 5 milliseconds for Atmos, machinery, player input, timers, mob life, lighting, etc and everything else that's part of the game. And remember, this here, this is internal to beyond. We can't directly modify it. Granted, this is a very extreme example, and a lot of other ticks, it's only about 29 milliseconds, 22, 28, 34. This tick's an extreme example, but the premise stands. We can't optimize this. It's entirely native to beyond. This briefly leads me back into what I brought up previously. As I mentioned, we, Paradise, run on a 10900KF, but we used to run on a Ryzen 5900X. Which may seem weird to swap from that to this, but there's a reason for it. On paper, the 5900X is faster in single-threaded performance by about 16%, as we can see on this graph. However, this is where it gets interesting. Proc execution, the main part we care about, proc execution on the 10900KF was faster than on the 5900X by about 2%. However, sending maps was slower on the 10900KF, which would make sense. But proc execution being faster didn't make sense, until I realized there's another factor here, which is memory speed. Ryzen loves fast RAM. It relies on it for its speed, whereas 10th gen Intel doesn't rely on it as much. The RAM in the server we had was running at 2366, which isn't hyper-fast, but it's not exactly a slouch either. The main part of the DM code execution loop is interpreting the DM ASM at runtime and translating it to the appropriate native system calls. This internally, we believe, but don't quote me on that, is a massive jump table of, if it's this instruction, do this native code, and said jump table would benefit from faster RAM speeds. This, I assume, is why Prox executed faster on the 10900KF than on the 5900X, because it has to go through this massive jump table. Whereas the native code in send maps doesn't need to go via the massive jump table inside of Beyond, so it can execute faster on the 5900X than the 10900KF. Anyway, I digress. This is why lag is often unavoidable. As of the time of writing, Beyond is constrained to one core only. However, this may change with the release of 5.15. Lomox, the developer of Beyond, is working on offloading map sending to another thread. I can't even begin to quantify the speedups this would bring. If you take a ludicrous situation like the one we have right here, with sending maps using 45 milliseconds of the CPU, aka 9 tenths of it, if this is offloaded to another thread, we suddenly get almost all of this space back to use on proc execution, which gives us a lot more processing power to play with. Like, a lot. This is why a lot of hosts, me included, cannot wait for the beta with threaded send maps. The amount of speed gains we get here would be insane, and would allow us to have more fluff in the game without impacting performance hugely. Either way, thank you for watching, hope some of you learned something, feel free to ask questions or correct anything in the comments, said corrections will be added in the description if applicable. I will see you all next time, where I describe how a complex SS13 backend is made up, as well as- So... I'm recording this ending way after the main part of this. Like, I recorded the Tracy part of this on the 1st of January, and it's now the 7th of February.
Turns out I have severe motivational issues at the moment, and it's likely going to be a few months before the next part of this is out. Life has been extremely hectic for the past bit, and it's not going to get any simpler time soon. But, uh, hey, at least the first part of this should explain how lag and shit happens in SS13. But, uh, the other part on hosting setup and everything else, I can't give a timescale on one that is, other than soon, TM. Yeah, anyway, see ya.